Okay, I think we've made some real progress today. I think that Miss Hathaway, talking about the benefits of winning her Oscar, shows us all how we can move on from not starring in our own Catwoman movie. Oh, please. Miss Pfeiffer disagrees? Yes, Miss Pfeiffer disagrees. They talked about making a Catwoman movie for years, and I was supposed to play the part. But they waited too long, and the fan base died down resulting in that abomination with Halle Berry. Shh, you know we never mention she who must not be mentioned. But aren't you technically mentioning her? It doesn't matter. Pfeiffer's role should have been my role to begin with. Yes, Sean Young. We all remember how you ambushed Tim Burton dressed as Catwoman in order to force him to put you in the role. And that's not comedic writing. She really did that, folks. Still doesn't matter. Barry stole the role from all of us, and she ruined it. Yes, it was the first time a Catwoman had been given the leading role, and she botched it up forever. Yes, and she has never paid for her actions. Now, now, ladies, let's stay focused, okay? Uh, Eartha Kitt, I believe last week we were discussing how you felt like a Catman trapped in a Catwoman's body. No! I agree with them. We should keep our focus on the pussy bitch who stole our chances to shine. If it wasn't for her, one of us could be the definitive Catwoman. Aren't you dead? Kit Kat is right. It's time for retaliation. We can't just sit here all day and listen to this half-wit psychic analysis. Psycho. What did you call me? The counselor is name-calling? This group is falling apart! We need to take action! We will get our leading role! Rolling ours! Unite! Now, ladies, ladies, this is getting out of hand. Now, the Catwoman movie is so despised that no one would ever write that character in a leading role. Okay? I doubt you could even get the lead in the Catwoman review. The what? The Catwoman review. The one coming out this week. By who? Nostalgia Craig guy, remember it so you don't have to. When the movie Batman Returns came out, people mostly had one reaction. The hell was that? But they also had another reaction. Catwoman was pretty cool. And thus a movie based on the anti-hero was in development forever. Tim Burton went back and forth on the project, Mitchell Pfeiffer went back and forth on the project, scripts were rewritten and retooled. Until it finally reached the perfection that only years and years of development can give us. Oh, <laughs> just look at the costume of our main character. Oh god, let's just get this over with. This film not only tops a lot of worst comic book films of all time lists, but it also tops a lot of worst films of all time period lists. And you can definitely see why. It is a special kind of bad. The kind of bad that the main characters from the producers would put together as an intentional flop to cash in on some sort of money scheme. Yeah. That bad. I'd say let's review it, but really, this is more like a study. A study in asking the questions how, why, and... No, those are enough. Let's go ahead and study the epic failure that is Catwoman. It all started on the day that I died. We open with our main character deceased, obviously trying to symbolize the movie's ability of being dead on arrival. The day that I died was also the day I started to live. But we'll of course get to that later as we see the evil corporation our main character works for, Makeup! But they're trying to hide that better as the husband and wife owners of the company, the wife played by Sharon Stone, are stepping down from being its spokespeople because... They just fucking look evil. It has been a magnificent 15 years, but we have decided to choose a new face to represent Eileen. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, quick word of advice to anyone joining a large corporation. If your bosses laugh like this, <laughs> evil! 
Or how about if your performance creates the unforgivable sin of making Rupert Everett look subtle? This is not even close to what I wanted. I know I can fix it. I do not reward incompetence. I have no idea why I expected your art to show better taste than your wardrobe. You totally put me off my dick in caviar party! I bet you didn't even know we threw those, did you? But she's just too timid to fight back for herself, as our main character named Patience... Yes, our kind, quiet innocent is named Patience. The same as naming these characters Meanie, Broody, or ABLE! Still manages to get to his pity as he allows her to turn in the project tomorrow by midnight. But that's pretty tough, seeing how she can't even tell those hardcore parties with pink light bulbs to keep their music down. Excuse me! Hi! Do you think you could just... Maybe turn the music down just... You'd better pray this isn't creating contrast for later! It's also difficult when other people's pets like to impossibly place themselves in dangerous situations so that others would try to save them instead of doing something sensible like calling the fire department. Hey, bro! Easy! Whatever it is you're thinking, whatever it is you're feeling, it's not worth it, you understand? Now look, I'm a cop. Maybe I can help. I know! You read the reviews to the call! I'd be depressed too! So the cop saves her, but finds she's in a hurry to return to her everyday mundane job. So every day that this guy is in the exact same spot as before. Is the railing his desk? But the cop manages to find her and returns her wallet. Tom. God, that is such a good name. Tom Lone. Rhymes with cone, phone, bone. <laughs> Not that rhyming's all that important. Just be in my cubicle. Hello. Just let me know, Hallie, if you want me to be more awkward or not as attractive as you. Is this yours? This is nice. Thanks. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of early Chagall. Elegant, but whimsical. <laughs> you know, not enough cops use the words elegant and whimsical. I like to see it brought up in more police meetings. All right, men, we're gonna take down this drug lord the old-fashioned way. What's the old-fashioned way? Elegant and whimsical. Ah. Peterson. Yes, sir. I want you to especially be enchanted and pleasant. You got it, sir. We're gonna break into this bastard's home, kick down his door, and introduce him to a world of wonder and merriment. Hooray! Now, ready your boas. Tradition of the old Dutch masters. I'm impressed. Don't be. I noticed all the art in your apartment, so I Googled at the office. <laughs> Aw, well that's alarmingly creepy. I wanted to apologize to you about this morning for thinking that you were a jumper. I was hoping I could make it up to you by taking you to coffee. So he apologizes to her for saving her life, and thus invites her out on a date to make up for it. You have to wear that leather outfit last night I got you for your birthday. Remember, I will never, ever, ever wear that leather outfit. <laughs> oh, I hope this is creating more contrast! Because if it isn't, that line will be awkward and totally pointless, but if it is, oh boy! <laughs> One obnoxious 90s edit later, we see that our messenger to drop off her design has cancelled. So she has to drop it off at Obvious Evil headquarters herself. I don't care that the FDA never saw the, the headaches and the, the, the nausea and the, the fainting spells. Those okay, is it me or is the editing in this movie out of control? When it has nothing to cut to, it will literally cut to itself! I don't care how short your audience's attention span is, only cut when you have something to cut to! It's like a boxer who has nothing to fight so he just hits himself. But she stumbles across the plan of Corella Jane Lynch, whose new makeup line will start damaging the skin if it's not continually applied. She tries to escape through the sewers, but luckily the henchman who doesn't work there knows the exact button to push in order to flush her out. So she falls into the river, yet somehow ends up on some rocks far away from the river. Did the water just grab her? Where we see the... Embarrassingly bad animation left over from Puss in Boots comes in and quite literally breathes new life into her. I'm not even making that up, it literally breathes new life into her. I suddenly have a need to incorporate horrible cat jokes into my life. Oh, 
And I'm not kidding. Everything she does the following day is related to some kind of bad cat humor. She sleeps on a shelf, lands on all fours, hisses at dogs, eats several cans of tuna. And I shit you not, this is a real scene of what happens when someone gives her catnip. idea of what Catwoman should be. Not paid writers and directors! No, I take it back. Third graders read comics, so even they would have a better understanding of what makes a better Catwoman than you. Julie Newmar would be telling you to come down. Crazy cat ladies would be calling you crazy cat lady. I is this really like your best foot forward? Years and years of rewrites and fine tuning and this is honestly what you've come up with? We haven't even got to the dumbass costume yet and already I'm embarrassed for you. I'm embarrassed to look at you. It's like that kid that joins the football team, even though he's like that big, but you show your support anyway, but that turns out you shouldn't have because he's in the hospital with five fractured ribs and he's like, why'd you support me? Why'd you show your support? And it's like, I don't know. I saw a movie where a woman snipped catnip and it fucked me up. I mean, really, who would take being a cat woman this ridiculously serious? Cat women unite! We will find this nostalgia critic and force him to have us star in his review. You know, ladies, I really don't think this is helpful to the healing process. Oh, but we have such plans for you. Yes, in a few moments, once we conveniently leave, that door will open to reveal a ferocious killer tiger. Ripping you limb from limb, leaving only counselor bones. Thus concluding our death trap that ties into our villainous identities. Come, ladies, we have a critic to visit. <laughs> Will the counselor get out of this one? Will he be the main course for our ferocious feline? Will he be ripped to shreds and left for Tiger Chow? Will his body be gnawed at until the gnaw can gnaw no more? Will he be next week's kitty litter? Will Tiger Digestion be his new iPod playlist? Will he have to spend the rest of his life as a kitty kebab? Can the counselor stand being part of a great balanced breakfast? Is there any escape from his delicious decadent doom? Tune in tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat sight. Patience has no memory of being drowned, which is never really explained, but after this scene you could say she's a porcupine and I wouldn't question it. But she does remember that she forgot her date with her cop friend and leaves an apology coffee. Her life also seems to have a little bit more bite to it. Hey! I think someone's cooking up some contrast payoff! But the contrast doesn't stop there. She gets on that leather outfit she said she would never put on and starts living up to her cat burglar name by stealing stuff. But it seems she now has a split personality as in the morning she does remember stealing them and actually returns it with the word sorry written on it. She finally wants to know what the hell is going on, so she returns the cat named Midnight to its owner and asks, what the hell is going on? You wrote this? I was a professor for 20 years. The goddess Bast. The mouths are sacred to Bast. They're her messengers. Oh, and here's a fun game. Bet yourself $10 that you can listen to this explanation of who she is without cracking a smile. You follow your own desires. This is both a blessing and a curse. You are a cat woman, incredibly heightened. So I'm not patience anymore? You are patience. 
And you are Catwoman. You just lost ten dollars, didn't you? So as she shows all the Photoshop pictures of history, she says that she has been given a gift that's been passed on through the ages. And that she has tried to prove this theory as a professor in the past, but nobody has ever believed her. Why? Male academia. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was the reasoning again? Male academia. <laughs> okay, look, lady. Um, I'm not gonna act like there isn't some double standard bullshit going on in the world. Uh, women getting paid less than men, that's bullshit. Uh, men sleeping around with women being called a player, but a woman sleeps around with men, she's called a slut, that's bullshit. But when you go around with your theories that there are in fact cat women who exist today and have existed years in the past because the spirits of the Egyptian gods are in these little tiny felines going around who breathe on dead women, bringing them back to life, a sort of cat woman zombie, if you will, who now exist and fight crime even to this day. Why do you think nobody believed you again? Male academia. Eh, wrong! It's because you're fucking crazy! Male academia. Suck my sexist, women-bashing, chauvinistic, stripper-watching, porn-loving, overly-paid dick! If this movie's all women or power, how come in the next scene she's dressed like a poster a 13-year-old boy would hang over his bed and jerk off to? Yeah, look at that thing. It looks even dumber close up, doesn't it? I can't tell you how it looks on her far away because I never see it on her far away. Instead, they place it on her CGI puppet, which makes me keep checking the TV to make sure I haven't put on a rerun of fucking reboot. Someone needs to show these idiots how Catwoman is really done. Hello? Hello, critic. We're just giving you a fair warning that you better watch your back and keep an eye out around every corner because a fearsome band of sharp-toothed panthers are on the prowl. Okay. Guess I'm not gonna throw any caution to the wind here. Who could that be? He opened it! I can't believe he just opened it! Cat's out of the bag, critic. We need a row we can sink our teeth into. And you have the perfect pot. Cat-related pun! What the hell's going on here? What do you want? We're here to star in your Catwoman review. So we can show up that cow horse Halle Berry. Forget it! You're not stealing this review from me! Very well, you force us to take action. Get ready to be declawed. Ha-ha! You've fallen for the Catwoman's greatest weakness! Fetish fuel. Come on, ladies. Let's finally put these things to some good use. Oh, come on, what are you honestly going to do with those pointless things? duality, it often wins them critical praise. Hey! You seem very... too people-ish. Huh. Are you kidding? I am so psychologically tortured. What do you mean? I'm the one who's constantly switching sides. Hey, I am extremely complex. Oh, please. You never even got a chance to be in the role. My dreams were crushed in the first third of screen time. Oh, yeah? Well, can you sing about your dreams like this? I dreamed a dream in time gone by. Well, that cat fight's going on outside. Let's see the real catastrophe that's going on here. We see Catwoman goes inside a club thinking she can find the answers of who tried to kill her. What can I do for you? 
White Russian. No ice. Hold the vodka. Hold the Kahlua. I'M A CAT! She locates one of the thugs that tried to kill her that night and tries to get some info out of him. The other night you killed somebody. She was a nice girl. Why? Oh wait, gee, let me try and guess what the next line is. Uh, pfft, dog ate your biscuit? Cat got your tongue. Oh yeah, yeah, that seemed much more logical. So, he tells her about the secret headquarters, she goes there, and then leaves. Odd. But wait a second, our cop friend might be on the lead about who stole and returned those jewels from the other night. Well, there are similarities. Shape of the S, harsh stroke of the R's. Are you fucking kidding me? You took it to a handwriting expert? A handwriting? Look at them! Ray Charles with a fucking blindfold! I could tell it was the same person! But hey, don't let this get in the way of your date, where a carousel breaks and she uses all her flips and kicks to save a little kid from falling. No, oh, wait a minute. Could this and the handwriting point to her possibly being the culprit? Well, I'm not sure how you did it, but I'm impressed. Guess not! No, clearly he needs to see her do it. Like this encounter at Cirque des Desusicle where she's trying to get more answers. When our cop friend comes across the cat woman who's the same height, same skin color, exact same voice, and yet really fucking miraculously still can't tell who it is. Yeah, look at him trying to take off that mask. Oh, you'll figure it out someday. Up oh, too late, she got away. Oh well, better luck next time. I'm off on a date with my cat-like girlfriend. It's good to get away from that criminal I'm chasing and being hooked up with a completely different person who hates the rain like a cat, eats sushi like a cat. She even makes purring sounds while having sex with you. Because guess what, you fucking moron? She's a goddamn cat. Uh, can you just promise me that there's a little blonde-haired niece going around actually solving the crime for him? It wouldn't be any more far-fetched than the rest of this movie, and by God, I just have to have some hope in humanity. Oh, fuck bunnies. Party ladies! Put your kitty pride into its... Wait, I have a better idea. I'll be right back. Where'd he go? Where did he go? Hey! can never resist a romantic dance sequence. Um. Anyway, Sharon Stone's evil plan is revealed, which is the exact same evil plan in the first 10 minutes. Nothing's changed, yet we spent an hour and a half trying to reveal it. And she frames Catwoman for the murder of her husband. But Inspector Clouseau finally figures out it was her the whole time! How? Well, through his brilliant deductive reasoning and high-tech CSI gadgetry, they took the lipstick mark that was left on his cheek during the fight sequence and compared it with the lipstick mark she left on a glass when they were dating, and a DNA and pattern decoder matched them up perfectly, thus deducing that they are, in fact, the same person. Wow, you made that so much more complicated than it needed to be! Hey, genius, don't tell anyone, but I have a sneaking suspicion that one of these guys is stealing burgers. I haven't figured out which, but shh, 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 we'll find the culprit. So even though she's thrown in jail, she slips through the bars. Can one of you remind me to hit something later? Sure. And makes her way to Sharon Stone's hideout, where she tries to stop her evil makeup from taking over the world. And you know, saying that out loud makes me realize just how fucking sexist this empowering women movie sounds. Male academia. 
But get this, because she's used the makeup for so long, it makes her skin indestructible. I can't be hurt. Be a lean. You stop using it, and your face disintegrates. <laughs> and if you keep using it, skin like living marble. So, wait, she's created this makeup where the more you use it, the more powerful you become? And all you have to do is keep using it to make you stronger? I'm sorry, what's the downside to this? Oh, people will rot if you stop using it. Well, okay, keep fucking using it. Where's the problem? Why are you marketing this in cosmetics? You should be marketing this to the military. Male academia. <laughs> oh, I guess the problem is she's a fucking liar. The makeup is clearly not indestructible as it apparently starts coming off. <laughs> Oh, and apparently indestructible doesn't also include falling off a building. Yeah, that's apparently it's kryptonite too. Kind of false advertising, but whatever. Catwoman is proven innocent, but fine, she can't stay with her boyfriend because... Last 10 minutes of Spider-Man explanation. And I cry for anyone who didn't get an immediate refund before the credits started rolling. Mm, you dance so well. Yes, and since I'm so complex, it feels like I'm dancing with more than one person. Actually, it feels like a little less than before. Hey! When will they realize I don't want four beautiful women in skin-tight cats interrupting my review? The fuck am I doing? Hi! You know, I'm not sure if you're aware of the internet's policy on boobs. You see, just the mere appearance of them, even if they're covered up, guarantees a view count of double deep proportions. We would be more than happy to continue exploiting our boobage once you give us an opinion of that god-awful Halle Berry. Oh, what? Her performance? <laughs> well, that's easy enough. I think she's fine. What? what? I mean, it's by no means good, but let's face it, there's nothing any actress could bring to it to make it work. I mean, when the script calls for you to rub catnip on your face, how well can you seriously portray that? It's over the top and goofy, but I think that just adds to the insanity that the film has already gotten across. So in all fairness, I see no reason to ball her out for it. Wouldn't you agree? Is my male academia showing? Prepare to be neutered by bullets, cat blocker. All right, stop it, all of you! I mean, haven't you ever put together that maybe not being in this movie is the best thing that could ever happen to you? I mean, this film is beyond bad. Like, head-scratchingly, how on earth could anybody take any sentence in this seriously bad? It's a marvel. It can barely be put into words. Nothing in any realm of reality could possibly save it from the bad writing and directing that consumed every frame of this picture. Yeah, it is that bad. And you want to be a part of that? You don't even know what you're suffering from, do you? You are suffering from Catwomen raging against Halle Berry syndrome. That's right. You all have crabs. <gasps> so that explains that itching feeling inside. It's all right. A lot of women who have gone through what you've gone through have it and it's nothing to be ashamed of. All you have to do is find a way to live with it and continue to bring joy to people. But how can four attractive women dressed like this bring joy to people? On the internet, there's definitely a way. Oh, I am so fluffy. Oh, I'm so cute. Oh. Yep, the only thing that bizarrely gets more views than porn is cat oh videos. Oh my god, Eartha, oh. you are so cute! <laughs> cat, the way you're adorable! Oh. Barry. I hear somebody didn't like my movie. If you 
should come across Halle Berry, you are doomed, for she clearly has no idea what makes a real Catwoman. Halle Berry syndrome? Oh, God, am I in the wrong place? 